All right. It is Friday, Financial Friday. We are going to do our financial news wrap up. And here he is, Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I'm good, Ty. I hope you had a good vacation last week. You deserved it. Thank you so much. We had a great vacation and I am so charged. I've had such a great week. It's so fun to be back and be recharged, especially as we're in this halftime, right? We've got the middle of the year upon us. So um, let's get right into it. I want to talk about pre-roll. We were talking about the 500 student deal challenge. Mm -hmm. It's been so fun to see. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So the, the, the whole idea about the 500, 500 student deal challenge is I'm trying to figure out how I can hit my goal of having a positive impact. And my positive impact all leads with people closing an investment property. So what I did is, and it was your, it was really your idea. Let's be clear. I just happened to execute on it. We like three weeks ago, maybe it was four weeks ago. You said, Hey, you know, we should have a challenge. And we said, okay, let's do 500. And uh, we're doing it from June 1st of 2021 till May 31st of 2022. Our goal is 500 deals. And if that happens, uh, a, I'm going to donate $5,000 to Fresno's food bank. B, I'm going to interview my mom who hates this stuff, but she says, uh, you know, you can interview me and, and have your students ask questions. And then three, I'm going to dye my hair purple, right? So we're, we're going to do some fun, fun things. And uh, so far, the re the, it's been great. You know, I got a whole stack of these. I actually believe in my students and followers so much. I bought 1,500 of these. So I believe we're going to crush this. Uh, last week's total, we are already at 32. I always report the numbers Sunday. I can tell you that as of this week, this has a chance to be the best week yet. Um, so we'll just leave that as a tease for the number that comes out Friday. But what I want to do here is I'm starting to get selfies, right? Lots of people have taken book selfies over the years, but now we're getting, we're getting card selfies. So if you get one of these, you know, I'll send it to you, but take a selfie. Right. And, uh, you know, make it creative. We got uh, we have one epic shot of a pilot. Uh, I, I can't tell if it's a plane or a helicopter, but that was cool. We have others with their family. We got you know, it's just it's so much fun to see people having fun with this and reciprocating. Tag me on Instagram or tag me on Facebook. Send it to me. Uh, I just want to see. Let's have some fun. Be happy. you got a deal. And again, it says congratulations. One of 500. You did it. I am so happy for you. So just take that picture and uh, let's keep it rolling. We're, 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 I think we're going to get there. So uh, let's see what happens. I love it. I love it. It has been fun. And again, I would encourage people again, as you're closing your deals, make sure to message Michael on Facebook, Instagram, um, at the one rental at a time website, mm -hmm. engage with Michael to, so he'll send you, you close your transaction, yep. send it to him. And then he'll send you the postcard and then we'll have a lot of fun with the challenge. So I love it, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about PCE. PCE was something that we've talked about pre-roll and then also yep. just kind of inflation. What does PCE stand for? I believe tell it's us more about that. Yeah. So the PCE is first and foremost, it's an important indicator because it's the Fed's favorite indicator of what's going on. I believe it's personal consumption expenditures. It's like what we buy, right? Um, as opposed to CPI, Consumer Price Index, or PPI, Producer Price Index, all these freaking acronyms. The important thing for you and I is PCE is what the Fed looks at. This is the second month in a row it has come in hot, right? Uh, a single data point is not interesting. We talked about it four weeks ago. It was hot, but now we have two. Now you can call it a trend. Uh, the core came in at 3.4, but including food and energy, which is stuff you and I use, it was 3.9. Uh, these are highest numbers for 30 years. So again, it is running hot. Uh, it actually looks like the 10-year finally bumped up above 1.5 this morning on this hot number. Um, and of course, we have what the Fed talked about earlier about pulling uh, you know, interest rate raises earlier. And you know, as real estate investors, our largest expenditure is our mortgage, at least in most cases. So we got to follow what's going on with rates. And um, yeah, inflation is hot. Uh, some of it's clearly transitory, but I believe the hidden... Boogeyman is going to be wage inflation, which appears to be a lot more sticky historically. So uh, lots going on. Absolutely. I would agree, too. I think that, you know, as we start to go back to work, it's interesting. Um, I've heard a lot of people, just small business owners, restaurants, bars, people talking about, 
you know, the fact that they've got to pay more to get people to come back to work and incentivize yeah. people. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. So let's talk about inventory. What do you say? Yeah, inventory? Inventory is a big deal for me, right? Like three months ago, I put out that by the end of June, no, end of July, sorry, end of July, we are going to be at 2 million available homes. Again, for, for context, you're really at 3.3, 3.6 for an, an average or neutral market. Uh, we started this run when I made that call at 1 million, then we went to 1.16. Uh, last, last month, we just reported, which was April, I believe, because they're always so far behind. We're now at 1.23. So we're heading in the right direction. Uh, we need, I think we need to have a really big June and a really big July to get to 2 million. In all honesty, I think it's gonna slip a month just given the trend we're on. But without question, the trend is heading in the right direction. We will see more inventory. My students are telling me, it. Uh, they, everybody has their buy box, they're doing the work. That's how they're getting deals. My students are telling me that they're actually getting deals because they're doing the work, right? They're finding those odd properties. I did a live stream about a student that got a deal on a condo that was odd. I just got an email this morning from somebody that got a deal uh, on an opportunity that ended up being probate. And a deal is less than asking in a, in a high, high yield, which is what you want. So I think inventory is coming. I'm not as confident on the 2 million. Um, I'm still going to hold to it. Uh, you know, if 2 million comes in July or August, it, it, either way, it's a good thing. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about something also that's interesting. A headline financial news this last week about banks tightening up. Tell us yeah. more about that. You really got to watch banks because they're seemingly tightening up in a couple of different areas, both owner occupied and investors, right? Historically speaking, they've tightened up on investors first, right? They made their their yes answer or their, their buy box uh, tighter and tighter. Uh, but now they're even hitting owner occupants, something I did not know about, but because I interview experts that are experienced in other areas, uh, they're telling me that there was a patch put in the, their system for, for FHA loans that would let DTI go up to 50% like the last six months. That rolls off in six days, July 1st. Wow. So essentially, if you aren't already approved for a loan, you're not going to get a yes answer if your DTI is above 43 uh, as of today. And again, that's why you have, that's why I have built an expert panel across different areas. And, and one of them's a, 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 you know, a mortgage broker. So yeah, owner ox are going to see a harder answer. And that's one of the reasons inventory is going to build. Uh, we have his, we have been on a run where demand has been outpacing supply. We were on a pace there for a while of over 7 million units. Uh, now it's 5.6. So when demand goes down, yes, less answers inventory builds. That's just how this, this story works. So uh, it's all leading to more inventory. More inventory means better quality or more quality differences. And us as investors in the one rental at a time community can get better deals. Uh, but you got to watch. You got to watch the banks because they have the money. They make the rules. Love it. Thank you for that update. So let's talk about something. We, we talked about weddings. Yeah. And that's not really the topic, <laughs> but I want to just get into it. The economy yeah. beginning to open up or beginning to normalize. In weddings, what, what, what's going on there? Yeah, so I think it was like six or seven weeks ago, I talked about being in the light, right? We were finally both feet in the light, but it was really hard to see around us. But now you're starting to see, right? Uh, weddings, weddings now, weddings historically have been Saturday or Sunday, right? Historically. Now wedding venues are booking weddings seven days a week. Yeah. Sometimes two a day, right? Yeah. Morning and evening. Uh, there is... Uh, and again, think about going to a wedding on a Tuesday. I have never done that. But now weddings are being booked on Tuesdays because there's basically two years of pent up nuptials that are being forced into a summer, right? It's time. Let's do it now before, you know, before anything happens. Let's go do it. So that's just a sign. Cruises are starting back up, right? I'm a big cruise guy. At least we were. Uh, they they're, they're look like they're going out. And, uh, you know, my favorite cruise was the, was the Mediterranean, Mediterranean. I think we've been to Alaska two or three times. Lots of great places you can see on cruise ships. Those are starting again. Um, you know, Nike just reported crazy numbers. They're going to do 50 billion in the next 12 months. People are splurging on new kicks and new shoes. There's a lot of, finally data is showing that we are in the sunlight. And I got to tell you, Ty, it feels really good. Yes, I love it. So on the weddings, it's funny that, you know, talking about that, I didn't even think about it that far, but um, I'm scheduled to attend two weddings in like the next 30 days. But the interesting thing you just said 
Um, one is on a Friday night, and I think one of them is on a Thursday night. <laughs> there you if go. I'm not mistaken, it's a weeknight for sure. It's not a Saturday. So yeah, there you yeah, go. It's crazy. It, 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 dude, it feels so good to see people happy again. Yeah. You know, weddings is, is a time of celebration. The other thing that was interesting that, uh, that I saw that I don't think I reported on last week is births are down, right? Mm-hmm. I expected births to go up, right? We're all in lockdown and what's going to happen, right? But yeah, births were down like 8% year on year. Uh, so hopefully that turns around as well. I mean, kids and celebrations and birthdays and vacations. Folks, let's have some fun. We've been through some stuff. Let's make some memories, take some pictures and you know, let's smile some more. I love it. Let's smile some more. So um, unfortunately, going from smiles. <laughs> That's a hard transition. <laughs> no, it's a perfect transition, though. And, it, and, and, and it's mixed sided. Do we smile or do we frown? Yeah. Or are we uncertain? The next topic and our final topic for today, let's talk about the eviction moratorium. L.A. County, CDC. Yeah. I think Newsom is probably going to announce something, I think, in the next day or so. Without question. What, what are your thoughts? What are you seeing here with the eviction moratorium? Yeah, so it's funny. I put out a, I actually put out a video. I think it was last Friday. It may have been, might have been Saturday morning that I thought CDC was going to do something. Uh, and the reason I thought that is because it, they put out about $50 billion to, to make up past rents due. But it's been atrocious. It's been typical government bureaucracy and actually getting landlords the money and making the tenants whole, right? Which was the, which, is the goal of the $50 billion. So I just said, I think the CD is going to extend it. I think they're going to extend it a month and, and they're going to try to position it as don't worry. It'll be the last time we just want to pay people. And lo and behold, it's exactly what happened almost word for word yesterday. So first and foremost, um, I do think this will be the last extension. Uh, I've said it many times. It's unconstitutional. There'll be a big fine later when the wheels of justice catch up. Um, but yeah, this will be the last time. However, as a landlord, it's not the CDC you have to worry about. It's your local administration. And I do mean local. It could be state or city. For example, we are both relatively close to San Jose. They came out two days ago and said, we're waiting till October 31st. Right. Mm-hmm. So we have to watch these things. Uh, we talked about Newsom. There's no question Newsom is going to do something. To, to, yeah, there's just no question. My question for him is, is it going to be, is it going to match San Jose and make August? Or does he go all the way out to September? Um, and I, I, while I believe the CDC eviction moratorium will be the last extension, I have zero faith in anything Newsom says. So I don't know that that, I, I suspect he'll lie again uh, and it'll be extended again. So that's, that's kind of what I see. Um, I guess I'm happy that this is almost over. Again, I think it, it feels like this will be the last time. Um, not sure about us in California though. Absolutely. And it's interesting. I was in conversations as well following up and I had predicted that this was going to get extended as well in a small circle. The interesting thing, though, that in the conversation is that um, a lot of people looked at it as a real negative, which overall, I would agree. It Mm -hmm. is negative. I don't like to see anybody. I 100 percent. I look at a landlord as a small business owner. No and question. somebody who's just operating us, whether that's one single family or a portfolio or even just a handful of rentals, yep. it's still a small business. And so ultimately, yes, I think it's negative and unfair. But at the same time, you know, I know from our position and what we're doing, and I think for a lot of the viewers, I think there is an opportunity in here. And the reason why I say that is that mm. finding the opportunity, finding the silver lining specifically that there are probably landlords that this last little extension where they go, you know what, that's it. I'm sick and tired of this. I've been doing this for 25, 30 years. I'm just going to go ahead and let me just get rid of this property. I am tired of the landlord BS. Let me get out of the game. Thoughts, Michael? Oh, there is no question. Um, I've been, I've been a landlord for 20 years and the last 12 months have been the hardest bar none. I mean, two or three times harder than any other period. And it's because people were essentially going against the state and federal or U.S. Constitution, which I just never thought could happen. And um, yeah, there is no question. Then you add on top of that, Ty, the fact that the the Democrats and again, I'm, it's just who it is. I'm, I'm I don't talk blue or red, but the Democrats are going to run through something called budget rec- reconciliation for another trillion or two trillion dollars in spending. In order to get through budget reconciliation, you actually have to pay for it. 
and they're going to pay for it by raising taxes. It's probably going to be capital gains for a lion's share of that. And that's just another reason landlords are going to be like, I'm done. Forget it. I'm selling, right? Can't do my job. Can't, can't evict anybody. Now you're going to triple my taxes or whatever it is. I'm out. So like you, I'm looking at the next six months as great buying opportunities. And again, if you're in the course, uh, great seller finance potentially, because if you understand tax consequences, you can structure deals where the landlord really doesn't get that massive tax consequence. So lots of, uh, lots of opportunity ahead. I'm, exci- I'm excited going forward. The last 14 months have been tough. We have another month to get through. We may have two in California, but the next, the next 14 months, the next 28 months are going to be great. Uh, get your cheap, cheap fixed rate debt, get that cash flow. Uh, you know, you go get a 30 year loan with a three or a four on it. You're going to be so happy when they're five, six and seven. Um, so I'm, I'm excited by what I see in the next six months. I love it. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. As always, we always talk about the book. Yeah. If you have not picked it up, pick it up one rental at a time. It's amazing. Great book. You can find it on Amazon. Speaking of Amazon and book reviews, did you hit the 600? Not yet. We're like six short. Okay. So there's got to be six of you that are going to view this today, over the weekend, over the next couple of days. Let's get Michael to that 600 plus reviews, five-star reviews on Amazon. Also too, you can also, you put out so much great content on YouTube. I've got to tell you the financial news, the daily financial news is amazing, as well as all your expert series that you do and just a lot of nuts and bolts about getting into this business. So on YouTube, please follow Michael, subscribe. Thank you so much, Michael. You got it. Thanks, Ty.